Welcome to LEV Toys. Were you one of the eagle-eyed viewers who noticed my practice Mal doll here amongst the Cruiselings special collection? Well, today we're going to create the real one, the proper one, not the practice one. So we are going to make Mal. And because I love a beautiful frock, we are going to make her in her cotillion dress like this. So wish me luck. This is quite fancy. We've got almost the right style hair. This is her signature look. It's the wrong color. We'll fix that in a moment. Okay, to make her dress, we are going to use some purple polymer clay, because that's her colour, and we're going to use this pinky colour, which is like the accent colour, because you can see that in the middle layer. So to start, we're going to have to make these quite flat and thin, and I've actually used my pasta maker to do this, but you can do it with a rolling pin. We're also going to need something big and circular to cut around. This is the lid off one of my spray paint cans, and it is 65 millimetres in diameter. So this is going to be big enough. We're going to use this as our guide to cut hopefully a reasonably decent circle. It doesn't need to be super duper perfect. In fact, we can smooth over the ends in a moment, which we're going to do. That, that worked out quite nicely. Nice, let's get rid of the rest. And now we can just gently squish the edges of this. That's the technical term. We squish it and we can smooth it. It doesn't need to be really smooth because her gown's made out of, well, tulle. There's, there's a large amount of tulle on it and tulle's very rough on the edges, or it looks rough on the edges. It's supposed to. It's supposed to look like that. This is not a smooth dress. We're going to use one of the Disney Princess ball gown bottoms to first off cut the shape out of the middle so we can actually put it over the top. And that's a perfect shape. It's actually going to stretch out, but that's fine. We don't want it to stretch too much, but a little bit of stretch is going to be fine because we're going to be fitting three layers over the top of this. And then we use the ball gown to hold the shape of this to, to actually create the form while we are putting some gentle folds in to make it mimic a nice big ball gown. So lots and lots of just gentle folding and creasing and trying not to squash it down too far because we want it to be nice and puffy and big, absolutely fit for cotillion and for Mal. So lots and lots of pressing and creasing and we can finalize the shape as we put some more layers on, but this will do as our basic starting shape. Of course, I just can't stop fiddling with it. Now we need to take our fuchsia pink and we're going to make this one as the next layer. And this one is 35 millimeters in diameter. And we, well, I'm just gonna squeeze the ends of it down a little bit just to make them a bit thinner than the middle of it. And once again, we're going to use, <laughs> well, not our ball gown to cut the shape out because that's currently sitting <laughs> underneath our big part over there. Let's use this here to cut out the middle. And then we just simply lay it over the top of our bottom layer there. Nice and gently, gently, gently form it down over our existing base layer. Pretty, that's pretty. Let's check and see how that's gonna work. That's gonna look really gorgeous. Now, <laughs> at the risk of overdoing it, we now need a third layer of the purple to go over the top. So <laughs> after I finish poking a little bit further, we're going to get our third circle and see how that goes. Now this one's smaller, even smaller still. And this one, just move this out of the way. This one, let's measure it, is 25 millimeters in diameter. So this one is an inch across and we need to cut our middle out of this one. It's so hard to eyeball where the center is exactly. I think I did okay. I did okay. And then, I'll just squeeze around the edges a bit and then very gently lay this one over the top of the others. And now we have got a multi-layered ball gown. That's pretty. Let's just squish down the top a bit just to make sure that the torso can actually go on here and we haven't built it up too much. All right. If we're going to take this away to bake it, we're actually not going to do that on the ball gown. We're going to put this on some of my stunt legs here, which have been in the oven a few times, around a base of alfoil. So that's going to hold its shape while it's in the toaster oven. So I'll just gently lay that over the top 
and then I will carefully take it away and I will pop it in the toaster oven and we will bake it until it's hard. I need to stop fiddling with it, stop squishing it down. Yep, yep, it's still gonna work. All right, here we go. Take it away and bake it, but carefully because we don't want to smush it before it's hard. Now while it's baking, we are going to paint Mal's hair and purple is the color we're looking for. So let's put it here on my painting stand for hair. You can see it's already has seen a little bit of action there. And it is purple that we're looking for the color, but it is a pinky purple. So I'm going to mix my purple and the pink and hope that it turns out to be a light enough color because the color of her hair is actually almost that pinky purple color of the middle layer of her gown. So it's not, that looks pretty, that looks pretty pretty actually. <laughs> pretty pretty, that looks pretty with, with undertones of pink. Check it out. My problem might be that I'm putting this over brown hair so it might end up a little bit dark but let's do it and we can always do a repaint if need be so pretty pretty purple because she doesn't like pretty so funky awesome purple oh it looks delicious nice okay we need to wait for this to dry now and we'll let about half an hour pass and now the skirt is ready and it has done really nicely in the toaster oven it hasn't actually lost any of its shape the test will be however to see how it looks like on the actual body so looks it fits nicely it's not too long it's not too short and it looks spectacular <laughs> it's so romantic it's gorgeous and the hair's dry so let's see it's beautiful. You can tell who it's supposed to be. I think that's turned out really lovely. She needs her tiara though, because she has a gold tiara on. So that's nice and easy. We've got plenty of those that come with the Disney princess sets. And ta-da, Mal is ready for cotillion. Now, comparing with the picture, it's not quite what I want it to look like. Her hair is not quite the right shade, so we'll fiddle with that. And her dress is just too clean. It's too clean looking. We need some of that black grungy look that comes with the tulle and the beautiful beading. So we're gonna try and achieve that with some paint. So first up, I'm going to mix some more paint and see if I can't get the hair shade a little bit closer to, well, it's actually closer to a pink than a purple. It's a, it's a pinky purple, not a purpley pink. So I'll give it a whirl and see whether I can get that shade close to perfect. Now that's too pink, <laughs> that's too pink. So now I'll try adding a little bit more purple over the top of our pink and see how that turns out when it's all dry. It's now got a few little streaks through it, which I quite like. I think that looks really cute. That's, that's really close. I wonder if it'll look the same when it's dry. All right, I'm also going to fix up a special torso for her. So this is one of the Lego elves tops. This one's Iris and it's already got a base of purple and I quite like the necklace and I think we can leave the necklace, but I'm gonna cover over all the markings with some more purple. And then when that's dry, we'll add some of the black over the top as well. So it'll tie in hopefully with the skirt. And if I'm very careful, I can probably paint her gloves on too. We'll use a slightly different shade of purple that we'll use that pinky purple. I'm trying very hard to get this even all the way around. I probably should have waited for the torso paint to be dry because I'm guaranteed to smudge something. I'll be very careful. I'll be very, very careful. There we are, one glove. One glove done. Let's see if I can get the other one done without any major catastrophes. Let's find out. And we'll try and even them up so that they are both on the same, they both go the same distance up her arm so she doesn't look a bit lopsided. Because that would be a disaster for Cotillion. Imagine having lopsided gloves. Then that looks pretty good. We might, we might extend this one just a little bit. There we go. Now we're definitely going to wait for it to dry. And then, then we can add some black paint to it. While we're waiting for it to dry, we are going to add some black paint 
to the skirt to hopefully kind of make it look like that tulle overlay and just to not make it look so pretty and clean it, it has to have that kind of well kind of a grungy look it's still gorgeous but it's just not it's not Disney princess pretty it's 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 funky and cool my only difficulty with this is the tulle doesn't look glossy and the paint is going to dry glossy I know this from my practice one and I just couldn't figure out how to make it not glossy so we're just gonna have to manage with a slight shine on the black overlay here and I'm just gonna have to deal with it <laughs> I can I can deal with it it'll still look pretty all right the torso is dry so let's add a bit of black to the front because she has got that extending up into the bodice which matches well ties it in with the skirt nicely Now, it's all dry, let's assemble Mel in her cotillion gown. So skirt on, doesn't look too shiny, there's a couple of shiny spots there. We'll very carefully put her torso on. Oh, absolutely spectacular. Put her gloves down. They also line up very nicely. A head with some green eyes, which is nice and easy. It's the only part I didn't have to fiddle with. And her newly modified color hair, which is oh, still a little bit, a little bit more purple. Uh, it's, it's pretty close. It's pretty close, but it still needs a little bit more pink in it. But we're just going to have to manage the tiara on the top. And now Mel is definitely after she's given us a spin she's definitely ready for cotillion so my unmodified version here my made-up version of Prince Ben <laughs> is ready to escort her onto the boat which is also not the right boat but it's a beautiful boat they're gonna hold their cotillion here hold on he can't get very close on that side because her skirt is enormous so he's gonna have to try and stand over here and tuck his feet under her dress the perfect couple now, I actually think Mel would rock some different hairstyles with this ball gown. How about this one, which is up and swept to the side. Still got the bangs there, but oh, it's just gorgeous. A nice updo. Or if she prefers down, but with a bit more of the curls, like she actually has in her cotillion picture, she could try this one. It'd be so fun for a different look. It's, it, 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 look, it looks so lovely with the tiara, but it doesn't look Mel, does it? It's just not Mel. We'll put her trademark hair on instantly recognizable now ah uh, well it's ready i'll stop fiddling with her hairstyle if you haven't subscribed already make sure you do click that little notification bell check out some of my other videos while you wait for a new one which you know will happen really soon would you like to see another descendants 2 character as a customized midi doll let me know in the comments and i will see you again so very soon bye